A threaded needle is a powerful creative tool. Stitching by hand is a time-consuming meditative journey, so why should anyone care? Because the age-old craft of hand embroidery, the simple act of passing a threaded needle through a piece of cloth, continues to be relevant in an era defined by the power of digital technology. A hand-stitched piece can tell a story, become a vehicle for social comment, or embellish a service with exuberant color and texture. Hand Stitch 2021, Works by Texas Artist, is a survey of 10 women working with thread and needle at a time when embroidery and textile art in general is experiencing increased international recognition as a medium of choice by serious artists. Each artist has a personal commitment to exploring ideas and materials and how both relate to contemporary art. Debbie Armstrong, a native Texan, inspired by life growing up on the border in the town of Laredo, where Mexican and Texan cultures mingled. She draws inspiration from her interests in Mexican folk art with her color choices and images. Armstrong is a self-proclaimed stitch artist yet she expresses herself in a large-scale quilted format. Her pieces have a huge visual impact with their size and vibrant colors. She stitches only what she likes. Her relaxed construction method is to make individual stitcheries, one-of-a-kind quilt blocks, until she has enough. She lays them out and by trial and error, creates order out of chaos. In developing ideas, she admits to being a thief. She collects images and ideas wherever she can, and this quilt is no exception. Her design work is inspired by the Mexican printmaker, Artemio Rodriguez. She appropriated his images of the seven deadly sins. The eighth deadly sin, Armstrong has named hypocrisy, a mendacious sin a two-faced sin, a chosen sin. These images are her own. Look at the surface of her quilt. Armstrong has used many different stitches with various weights and thicknesses of threads in the tradition of Mexican folk art. She maintains a saturated color scheme. Exploration is a part of Beth Cunningham's artistic process. Currently, she is creating paper laminations with photographs adhered to silk organza with matte medium. The paper is washed away and the lamination is embroidered in kaleidoscopic silk, cotton, and rayon threads. This series, Suckered by Sweets, is inspired by her early childhood memories of visiting a candy store, of trick-or-treating on Halloween, of Christmas celebrations, and a favorite book, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. These innocent memories were squashed with the first cavities and noticeable weight gain. Candy went from being a delightful treat to the enemy in the cupboard. Candy corn, a Halloween favorite, appeals to the senses with its honey vanilla smell its pentagonal pyramid shape, and its consistent waxy texture. We are suckered by our senses into having that first bite. The reaction may be different if the label was read first and understood by the reader. Two ingredients, gelatin and confectioner's glaze, are found in many sweets such as candy corn. Gelatin is made from animal bones and confectioner's glaze is the same type of product as shellac, made from lac resin, a bug secretion. Jelly beans are coated with shellac to make them shiny. In candy corn, the viewer is pulled into the piece by the luscious, heavily embellished surface of the candy in the foreground and remains to explore the text, a listing of ingredients on the candy corn in the background. Conversation Hearts accounts for the most sold candy for Valentine's Day worldwide. 
The list of this candy's ingredients are similar to candy corn or an all-day sucker. Sugar, corn syrup, gelatin, gums, coloring, and flavoring. Sugars can be under the guise of dextrose, sucrose, maltose, fructose, plus 52 other names. Shockingly, over 68% of barcoded food products sold in the U.S. contain sweeteners. Presently, eating these sweet confections isn't so appealing. Yet Cunningham is inspired by the colors and shapes of the traditional celebratory candies of the past, changing the size and scale to bring attention to them. Celebrations by Janice Hooker is a series of nine small format stitcheries of recycled fabric, thread, and beads. Six pieces are shown here, all similar yet different. This series is inspired by textile scraps. These scraps present a special challenge for her because they are shapes, colors, and textures that she did not personally select. These discards have found a way into her artistic work. Figures, borders, and backgrounds. The objective here is not to restore them, but to give them new life. The scraps are layered, hand-stitched, and embellished to help stop the aging process of the textile itself. Sunshine for Tomorrow, number one, in this series, make use of recycled and reimagined materials. Buttons, beads, sequins, felt, cotton, silks, and wool pulled from her vast array of collectibles. Look closely for the embellishment with beads and sequins and different textures and weights of yarn and a multitude of different stitches. Hooker's use of the vintage thread card and buttons are quite effective in drawing the eye to the center of the piece and aids in holding the viewer's attention as each section is observed. Sunshine for Tomorrow, number three from this series of three sun-like orbs, continues with the same design concept of three layered circles. The center circle is heavily embellished, surrounded by a quilt remnant of triangles. Each outer circle utilizes plastic paper clips, buttons, hishi, sequins, or beads. It is placed on another quilt remnant and again, more hand stitching. In the background, notice the tiny seed stitches as they create movement around the circle. Lucia La Villa Haviland renders her work in a minimalistic manner. Inspiration is derived from her heritage and culture of life in Texas, the social climate in America, and the attitudes of the U.S. toward immigrants and asylum seekers. Border Crossing tells the story of a mother who has returned to her home, separated from her child at the border, mandated by the U.S. government. La Villa Haviland worked on visualizing how to convey the emotion of the breaking family. The size of the hands was a key decision. Her ability to deal with a volatile situation in a compelling manner takes thought and craftsmanship to evoke an emotional reaction. As the viewer, we feel the anguish as the child weeps and the weight of the government's grasping hands are ready to tear them apart. Her gradation of color and the long and short stitches of the skin and the shorts are exceptionally handled. A stem stitch is used for outlining the hands. A Magnificent Seven, a socially conscious piece, La Villa Haviland's COVID-19 pandemic work honoring doctors and nurses on the front line, 
Each figure has a patterned homemade mask, indicating the lack of PPE. Her current work is narrative, focusing on both personal and collective memory, telling stories as well as political issues that have and are affecting our world. Barbara Luigi learned to embroider as a child, trained as a professional artist, and combines the two in her portraiture work. Viewing the etched self-portrait of Rembrandt, the one on the left, she wondered if she could adapt the etching lines to stitch. This piece is an exploration in developing a new stitching technique for rendering life-size portraits in embroidery floss, one that was less dense and more canvas showing. Deci decisions were made as she stitched and observed the construction of the etching. She limited her color scheme, length and direction of her stitches. Her illuminating moment was her realization that curved lines could be created by weaving threads between underlying straight stitches seen on the nose and in the hair. This style using long stitches depends on the substrate of the primed canvas to hold the stitches taut. Luigi is known for her illustrious portraits of public figures. In Peace Portrait, she portrays Wangari Matai skin tone values and highlights with perfect precision. Luigi is fascinated with thread. Light reflects off silky surface of each strand. Shadows are cast, colors shift with the angle of view, glistening bright and subdued. Threads tunnel under the surface of the wool to depict ephemeral shadows and bark. The juxtaposition of luminous sunset tints and tones of deeper shades in the shadow creates a harmonious evening landscape. The thickness and weight of the threads adds to the overall cohesive embroidery. Contained, hand felted and hand embroidered, wool, silk and acrylic on canvas, is one of five in a series of abstract works by Kim Paxson. The layering of wool and thread reflects her training as a painter. These pieces convey her thoughts on the nature of energy, the known and unknown. Releasing, another piece in her energy series, hand felted and heavily encrusted with French knots and beads, reminiscent of pools of gasoline, ready to erupt with the right ingredient thrown its way. Paxson's modulation of color, size of thread, and stitches conveys this energy. Paxson's work isn't specifically autobiographical but each piece does reflect her life in some small way. Taken by surprise is a piece created during the uncertainty of the pandemic and commemorates the very sad passing of someone who contributed much to her community. This hand embroidery on brown and cream wool felt is displayed on a background of commercial fabric. The interior of the coat cites embroidered references to COVID-19 the neck and front edge of the coat informs the viewer of an unfinished life. Mickey Rodriguez is inspired by her deep respect and concern for the earth and sky. Bringing attention to the environmental problem of plastics, not breaking down into a usable substance, is a focus for much of her work. In this piece, Precious Sky, she explored a problem she posed for herself. 
How can I suspend the sky from the surface of the earth? Look at the detail shot on the right. Note her handling of the plastic elements. The round shape is repeated in the outer edge with its meticulous cutting and the applique of milagros in the central element where the running stitch and straight stitch define the circle. Rodriguez's piece, Airborne, includes discarded materials, throwaways, and unnecessary one-use object. She is in tune to the wasteful cast-offs that is every day and everywhere. It permeates our daily lives. Aside from their aesthetic appearance, these objects form an orderly pattern within each capsule shape. From a distance, the piece can be read as cells with microscopic organisms floating within. On close inspection, the viewer can name the objects within and revamp her or his original theory of what they have viewed. These materials reflect human identity. Rejected keys that no longer have a door to open, a lost bobby pin no longer needed for today's hairstyles. Buttons intended to be reattached to a shirt long ago discarded. A sheet of bubble wrap for shipping repurposed now encloses and holds precious pieces of lives. The Witness. A large abstract sculptural piece by Rodriguez invites the viewer to contemplate the complexities of her thoughts, her presentation, and construction of her work as she processes and records the events in her life and assesses her perspective on environmental issues. Inspired by fashion, it changes over time, fashion versus style, fashion in the media, and how it's presented in the media. Mary Ruth Smith's fashion collection is impressive. Her treasure trove of patterns contain hers and her mother's wardrobe choices, internet illustrations and magazine images. From these, she sorts and auditions possible choices for a collage that when completed, forms a unified composition. Contemplation is composed of two pattern envelope elements, 50s on the left and late 60s on the right, with a patchwork border. Decision making and problem solving are found in each step of her process, from selection of silhouettes, threads, colors, and the transferring of those images. Stitch selection has been narrowed to one, the back stitch. Her image transfer process is very exacting and sequential. In each section, important lines and shapes are highlighted and defined using only the back stitch in black. Embroidery is completed before the composition is formed and sewn together. There is a constant self-evaluation throughout the process. Every step has a purpose in relation to what has been done previously and to the anticipated next step. Smith's fashion series has sustained her for many years. Pamela Sudstill has been influenced by the makers in her family. Both grandmothers quilted prolifically and left many relics behind. Unused fabric, quilt blocks made to test designs or colors, quilt tops, or teaching samples. Sudstill works in layers, no matter the medium, whether it's mosaics, painting, quilting, or stitching. This piece, Heavenly Pink, is an 80 plus inch 
chromatic banner with tonal gradations, pattern on pattern with stitches and brush strokes of paint, and geometric in nature. Take a moment to peruse the detailed graphics of the banner. These stitches are exacting in shape and size, yet random in color. The field, with its yellow sun, was inspired by a view outer window. The foreground captures the garden plots laid out in geometric format. The middle ground has harnessed the sun shining over the land landscape. The background encompasses the distant houses and tree and opens to a pale blue sky, reminding us of Paul Clay's geometric abstractions. Studsill's variation of stitches in Ethel's banner are sewn with six strands of floss, pearl cotton, and a very large needle. Her colors are bold and flamboyant, emphasizing and accentuating each section of the banner, manifesting a cohesive whole. The embroidered work of the last several years encompasses a layering of time, along with fabric, stitch, and paint as she has used found materials from past generations. These materials are the inspiration for the next piece to be made. It is her hope to create surfaces that are rich with the chaos and the intricacies of life. Broken Dreams by Sue Ann Sullivan is made of hand-woven felted, stitched wool with vintage crochet. Sullivan calls on her curiosity for inspiration. She referenced Claire Ben when speaking of her studio practices. My approach is one of exploration and experimentation, constantly asking, what if I tried this? Detail of previous slide. The materials themselves determine the direction a project will take. Broken Dreams explores the interaction with materials and the unexpected result which wet felting will cause when the fibers tighten and shrink in different degrees as it dries. The surface is encrusted with various stitches, layer upon layer. View from my window. Hand felted wool, quilting, and stitching references her daily examination of the world outside a certain pane of glass. It grounds her, prepares her for the chaotic and confusing news of our current world. Stitching provides the quiet contemplation she needs to maintain her sanity amid it all. Mm -hmm.